America is an uncharted territory. We are angrier and more deeply divided than we've ever been at any point in our history since the Civil War. And at the eye of the storm is Donald Trump, ripping families apart, threatening women's most basic rights, and running for attorney general because I will never be afraid to challenge this illegitimate president when our fundamental rights are at stake. I believe that this president is incompetent. I believe that this president is ill-equipped to serve in the highest office of this land. And I believe that he is an embarrassment to all that we stand for. He should be charged with obstructing justice. I believe that the president of these United States can be indicted for criminal offenses. And we would join with law enforcement and other attorneys general across this nation in removing this president from office. In addition to that, the office of Attorney General will continue to follow the money because we believe that he's engaged in a pattern and practice of money laundering, laundering the money from foreign governments here in New York State, and particularly related to his real estate holdings. The country at war with itself. You may be wondering what you could possibly do to change it. The answer is simple, everything. Letitia James is the definition of doing too much. We know Letitia James, she's been on a crusade to uh, make Donald Trump pay at one point a judgment of $459 million, half a billion dollars, which then got slashed last week to 175, which is a much more reasonable sum. But she was counting interest and stuff. She was doing all types of crazy stuff. But isn't it funny that the same instrument that she's using to go after Somebody who's in a presidential election right now, a candidate that people have already voted for, she continues to go after him on the grounds that his real estate empire has somehow benefited him, that has that has been money laundering, that has been money laundering within his real estate empire. That's a very serious claim. You got to be clean when you're doing that type of thing. You can't then turn around and have the exact same thing. Case in point. An Irish society, unpaid loan, and the hypocrisy of Letitia James. Yeah. To celebrate St. Patrick's Day, here's a tale of financial shenanigan at the American Irish Historical Society, in which Trump deranged New York Attorney General Letitia James that is hoist <laughs> is hoist by her own petard. It invo involves a grand old building on Fifth Avenue, an unpaid loan, a fading family dynasty, and James Joyce theatrical production, which almost ended in fisticuffs, and hypocrisy from the AG as obvious as a glass of green beer. So what happened is this guy, James Doyle, a wealthy Georgia businessman, he has, he has a love for all things Irish. He joined the board of the nonprofit society, Crown Jewel is this building that is on Fifth Avenue, right? 991 Fifth Avenue, right across from Central Park and the Met. If you've been to New York, you know that's prime real estate right there, right? Pay attention to that because that's going to be important now. Over the years, uh, over the years, they weren't able to keep it up. They were mismanaging money and the property, you know, after 100 years or so. So in 2017, Doyle, uh, asked for a $3 million loan structured like a private mortgage. And get this, he was told that the building, the townhouse was worth $80 million. And that included all the air above it, the valuable air rights. Anyway, the, the society stopped making payments on it. And of course, that gets you right to where we are right now. He raised the money, reportedly raised the money for the mansion to save the mansion, right? And restore it back to its former glory in the 1970s, right? Oh, and that is Kevin Cahill right there with the, with the eyebrows. In 2019, his son, Christopher, then 55 years old, got embroiled in an ugly confrontation with the director of the Irish Rep Theater. Ah, that makes sense now. I know the Irish Rep because, you know, if you're a theater goer in New York, you're familiar with that theater, right? They were staging uh, a play in the townhouse adapted from James Joyce's story, The Dead. This is a fight that they were referring to. <laughs> the, 
let's just say tempers flared. The society continued on their financial path of dysfunction and uh, reached a crisis point in 2021 when Cahill tried to sell the building for $52 million. He couldn't sell it for $52 million. Remember, now it's been valued at $80 million. And then it was later reduced to $44 million. They still couldn't sell it. He died the following year and in stepped, guess who? The New York Attorney General Letitia James. Of course. Of course she stepped in. Right? Nothing wrong here. Ain't nothing wrong. But she took it upon herself to step into the crown jewel of, into this Gilded Age mansion. She announced that by state law, any sale of a nonprofit asset had to be approved by her. Oh, really? <laughs> Is that right? What you got to do with the Irish society, lady? You ain't Irish, last I checked. Effectively kiboshing the plan. So he's trying to get the money that was owed to him, the $3 million loan here. Doyle is trying to get his money back, the $3 million loan that was structured like a private mortgage. And the one that decides to step in and interfere, allegedly, is Letitia James, the New York Attorney General. Now, why would you say the Attorney General is out here stepping into any type of real estate battle, you would guess? So Letitia says, it's an amazing place. We have to, we had to save it, had to save it. One day people can come in there and enjoy it again, which was all very well. But Mr. Doyle was still owed $3 million. And he wants his money. He ain't playing with y'all. <laughs> He's not playing. There it is. There's the actual... Irish, American Irish Historical Society, flying the American and the Irish flag, mind you. So, Letitia James, the Attorney General, she appoints, goes out of her way and appoints a board of interim board of directors. And Doyle was persuaded not to try to collect the $3 million or to foreclose on the mortgage before the date of July, 2023, last July. But by 2023, he hadn't been repaid. So he went ahead and initiated the foreclosure on his own. Then he was blocked by Letitia, the same person who is causing so much strife in this 2024 election for Donald Trump, decided to block this man from collecting his money in a very similar situation. Of course, she's not on the side of the man that's owed money, right? She's on the side of who would be Donald Trump, which she has claimed is the wrong side, right? <laughs> because he is money laundering. He is stealing. He is doing all this through the apparatus of real estate. She blocked the foreclosure. And she claimed the mortgage was invalid because he was a board member. Well, wait a minute. <laughs> I thought Letitia James, the attorney general, set the uh, interim board of directors and put him on that. Couldn't that be? That seems a little premeditated in a way that you knew you were going to do this move. If he was on the board, he should be happy to be on the board and he won't pursue this foreclosure. On Friday, uh, well, this is last Friday. Friday, Doyle launched a lawsuit against the society and requested a subpoena to be issued against Letitia James, requiring her to produce a raft of documents, including anything relating to the campaign events that she was hosting in the property. You see where this is going? At the townhouse or any con contributions to her political campaigns from the society or any of its members of directors, right? He's on the board. He should know. They gave her some money. So she benefited from this, right? Hmm. This is ridiculous. Doyle's lawyer, Tim Palatori, alleges that James's enthusiastic involvement in the Doyle case may be driven by connections with the defendant. Sounds like a little foul play. Perhaps, maybe, you think? So this is uh, Cahill 
and the society's uh, current president, General James Normal. Okay. So, oh yeah. So this is the other part of it. Not only did she tell them when he took out the $3 million loan that this building was worth $80 million and had air rights. So it gives you the possibility of building the buildings higher, you know, as in property. In New York, that's very important because you might have a small property, but you could build it up to the sky, you know, that that adds value to your property, believe it or not. If in fact, this building, what we're saying here, doesn't have air rights, that means they've misrepresented what this building is worth. So it says James Normal made representations to Doyle that the building had air rights and could be built or rebuilt higher than its current height. And this is Letitia James's guy. He points out the uncanny similarities between his client's predicament and the notorious case James brought against Donald Trump for supposedly inflating the value of his properties to get a better mortgage, right? That's what she said Donald Trump was doing, right? Although her office is now taking a polar opposite position. The lawsuit alleges that Doyle was given fraudulently inflated valuations of the townhouse, putting its market value at over $80 million. Cahill and the society. In reality, there are no air rights. And the actual value is closer to $20 million. $80 million, $20 million. $80 million, $20 million. And you've come in between this. An elected official. In reality, there were no air rights. The society made a gross overvaluation of the townhouse, which induced Doyle to make the $3 million loan. That's crazy. Tish James, <laughs> they call her Tish, <laughs> said nobody, and look at her, she got her Irish flag out. She, she, she holding it down. She's repping Ireland now, okay. Tish James said, nobody is above the law, which should include Tish James, who seems to have actively aided and abetted the art of the steel, Parlatory told the Post. He kind of flipped that, right? You know, Donald Trump's book was called The Art of the... Right, you, got, you got me. The organization fraudulently inflated the value of their building to induce my client into giving them a mortgage, which Tish James is now trying to help these fraudsters avoid having to repay. The theory of fraud Tish James is accused the Trump organization of engaging in is identical to the fraud she is aiding and abetting here. James has come down on the side of the society against this lender, Doyle. And yet her in her signature case, you remember, because she ran on the fact that she was going to get Trump, right? That's her. This is her signature case. These are very careerist people, if you see it. Her and Fonnie Willis, very careerist in nature. People versus Trump, she took the opposite position, holding that where an organization inflates the value of a property to obtain a loan, that is fraud, even when the lender was aware of the actual value and was paid in full. So then where do you stand? If this is the case, then you and your buddies over at the Irish Society should be in some, you should be in some trouble, right? Right? You inflated the property value to make it seem like it was worth more. So you could induce somebody to save the building for their own personal finances. This, this is interesting. Trump was punished with a $355 million fine. So delighted was James by the verdict last month that she started live tweeting daily Trump's daily interest bill. That's crazy. That is crazy. When you think about that, like, that's just like rubbing it in somebody's face. Like, what part of the law is that? Like, people get crazy. They get Trump derangement syndrome, and they end up getting real kind of crazy when, when they're going after Donald Trump. I'd be mad as hell. If I, if I was getting sued and I, it was a judgment against me and you counting the interest online, that's crazy. Parlatori points out that the society inflated the value of the property to obtain a loan, just like Trump was accused of doing. But the difference was that Doyle could not conduct the same sort of sophisticated due diligence that Deutsche Bank did. Therefore, unlike Trump's lenders, Doyle did not know 
didn't know the true value of the townhouse, right? It's a big difference. That's a big difference. So, you know, because Trump's properties were appraised at a certain amount and he believed that they were worth that once again. And even more important difference is that Trump paid back every penny he owed, but the society never paid back the oil. As the old pro Irish proverb says, forgetting a debt doesn't mean it's paid. <laughs> oh, she's petty. Oh, she's super petty. She's petty with that one. But what do you think about that? Is this a double standard that we're hearing? You got the exact same politician, Attorney General Letitia James, out here slapping high fives because she is thinking that she's able to interfere in this election and make Donald Trump uh, at least financially crippled. And if he can't pay, then there could be some type of other repercussions. You know, this is what I don't like. I don't like how she's moving here. This is, you know, the whole got to get Trump thing and running on that like Fonnie Willis did in Fulton County. Like, what is this? This is no part of the legal system here. And say what you want about Donald Trump, but you can't say that he's getting a fair shake if, if he's getting these type of arrows thrown in his back. I'm saying if you can't beat Donald Trump on election day, just say that. Right? Because all this extra, you know, we're gonna, we're gonna get him, we're gonna take him down. Well, I'm running on this, I'm running on that. You remember the same thing happened to Bill Cosby. That prosecutor ran on the fact that he was gonna put Bill Cosby in jail and then put Bill Cosby in jail. And shortly thereafter, now Bill Cosby's out of jail. Why? Because there was a miscarriage of justice. And this is something that we cannot allow here. You got New York City, there's so much, so many problems in New York City from the migrant crisis, from homelessness, poverty. Um, you got crime going through the roof. Like you got a lot of things going on. And this is coming from somebody who was a former New Yorker, right? The city is not the same. It's not what it used to be. And, you know, it's not looking very appealing. You know, I, I'm an actor. I love the theater. I love going back to see plays and stuff. And I, it just doesn't seem like something you want, you know, like <laughs> in its current state. And then if you allow something like this to happen, if you allow somebody, a rogue attorney general to jump out here and impact a presidential election because she feels like it, you need to worry about yourself. Because what if somebody decides to do the exact same thing to you? They get a vendetta and a position of power and authority and they're going to take it upon themselves to advocate that you be financially ruined and sent to jail. There's no place in American for that. I think it's foul. I think it's foul. So call me what you want. I think it's foul. So she needs to stand down, relax. You're doing too much. <laughs> Yo, some women hate to hear that they're doing too much. But th in this case, this is a perfect example of doing too much. But anyway, let me know what you think about it in the comments. If you like this video, like, comment, subscribe. Hit the bell notification for all uploads. If you want to watch more, please watch one of these videos down below. This is Fawcett Medium.